the fathers and grandfathers of our church. I ain't going to say which one is which. <laughs> but Brother Harris, if you've ever met him or know him, he's like the grandpa of the church. I mean, he has, he's, he's never met someone who he hasn't been friendly to. Uh, he, is, he doesn't know strangers. And that's why him and I get along. We're very similar in that realm. We love everybody. And, and that's just how he is. And, and Brother Flannery is just an amazing man of God who has encouraged this church bless this church. He always keeps in contact with the pastor. You know, out of the blue, he'll just say, I'm praying for you. Yeah. You don't know how much that means to me, brother, just to know that there's another man of God out there praying for me in this church. And it's working. It's working because see, we're going on, this is six and a half years. This is not a new church anymore. Matter of fact, churches have since closed down in this city since we've kept going. That, that started before us. Five and a half? I'm thinking about when we're married. Or what I've been clean six and a half. It'll be seven years and seven. Not, I'm, I'm getting old, y'all, so you have to forgive me. But it's been five and a half years. Five and a half years in this church, in this building. It's been six years, though. A total, hasn't it? Six years. That's, that's why I got a wife. Without her, I'd be a little lost. But we have been here year after year. No one has been in this building that long for years before we got here. There'll be one, two years someone would come in, rent, and disappear. And, and we told them, when we, when we buy this from you, we don't want to rent. We want to buy this from you, and we're not going anywhere. And I'm so glad and so grateful that we're true. We've been true to that statement. We're not going anywhere. This is our home, and we're going to make a place for people to reach salvation in truth in this place. I'm honored, honored to be your pastor. I'm honored to be leading this place with such beautiful people and have such awesome friends and mentors. Just that alone gives me something to shout about for the new year. What God is doing consistently on a regular basis. Praise the Lord. You're going to sing. Okay, you take this. Praise the Lord. If the Holy Ghost hits you while you, you sing, you're not going to interrupt her. You go ahead and praise the word. Is that, is, that, is that true, sister? You just go ahead and praise and worship the Lord, brother Elias. I may need an adjustment on sound. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One of them got to work. God's been good to me. How about you? Praise the Lord. In case you didn't know, the name of the song is God Has Been Good. And that is true. Brother Elias, can you give me some sound over there? Just so you know, decided to play with the other one wouldn't I want you to stand up and pray for a second you just pray while I take care of this because we can take time we always need to pray to God so I want you to stand up and pray until I get this going you just stand up and praise the Lord and pray thank you Jesus Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I think your prayers are working. Keep going. Keep going. Somebody pray. We have a technology free problem. Praise God. Here we go. Turn it up, please. 
praise. Here we go. Somebody praise the Lord. I'll climb the mountains high, swim against the tide. I'll walk through trials of fire, for he's always by my side. I can feel his hand in mine, hear his voice so sweet, saying only be true, my child, your every trial I'll meet. He's been so good to me, he's blessed me all my life through. He's been so good to me. He'll be so good to you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And all oh, so many times His will I failed to obey. Yet in each trying time He's always showed me the way. night a lamp for my feet on the other side of Jordan I know my Savior I'll greet for he's been so good to me he's blessed me all my life through he's been so good to me he'll be so good to you Bless me all my life through. He's been so good to me. He'll be so good to you. He's been so good to me. He'll be so good to you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. He's good. Is God good? Oh, somebody tell me, when is God good? I can't hear you. When is God good? All the time. Hallelujah. He has been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want to give some, some praise reports real quick. I haven't even get a, really got a chance to go into detail before, uh, but we're going to talk about that tonight in detail, but let me just tell you, you be seated for a second. God has been so good, and I want to share this with all of you. I want you to enjoy this with me. I met, I met with my, my, my son's mother, sat down with her and our son and the pastor of New Life Apostolic Church and began to work things out together to be open to work without hostile, hostility and strife and, and to be in that building six and a half years later, that's a real number, having been there for all those years with all the history being put aside and saying, you know what, we're going to start fresh. All right, all right. Things may have not have gone the way they should have gone and we don't need to go into detail, but we're going to start fresh. Sat down with that pastor, said, young man, I'd like to get to know you better. And guess what? I want to get to know him better because God wants unity in Gallup, New Mexico. He wants unity in this whole area so that we can win against the wiles of the devil. There's fiery darts on their way. But it gets better. I had a good friend of mine, someone who used to be a good friend who, who the Lord used me to bring into the church and I was his mentor and when stuff went south, he wouldn't talk to me. He was, he was in a position where he couldn't talk to me. And, and it, it hurt because I love this young man. And, and, and so it was, it was a painful time. Sunday we had a miraculous, powerful time in and after church. Monday morning I wake up and my dad comes in the room and said, so and so was at the door. And I went. Now him and I have not had a conversation in over six years. 
He came in my living room, sat down, and said, listen, all that stuff that happened in the past, I don't think I had all the right information. I want to tell you I'm sorry. I didn't know. I was only working under orders. And now I want to tell you that I love you and I want to be close to you again. I want to be friends with you again. I want to get connected with you again. I love you. And I look at said, I've always loved you, son. I love you too. And we hugged and embraced and tears came down. And my wife and I and this young man all prayed together. God's been so good to me. Oh. boss. That is a miracle. It is a bona fide miracle for anybody who knows what's been going on. That is a miracle. And in this church, we've always said we're going to love him. We're going to pray for him. And we're going to wait till God does the miraculous. Well, he's doing it. He's done it. And we're moving forward in healing in this city. I hear that song. And this is not just about us. This is about souls all over the city and beyond. This is about Tohatchi and Newcomb and Pawati and Gallup and Albuquerque. And it's all going to come together. Do you know what God's getting ready to do? God's getting ready to blow it through a whole new door. God's getting ready. 2015 is going to be amazing. Get ready. Get ready, Brother uh, Flanner. If you come, he's going to lead us. Until the last sermon, I, I said last week I was preaching the last sermon of the year. I guess I lied because we got one more. Brother, if you come, let me hug your neck. I love this man. We love you, brother. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lift a voice. Lift a voice of praise and shout unto God. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Do I have to stay up here? Can I come down here? Amen, amen. Look at three people and tell them you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You haven't seen anything yet. If that makes you feel better to say it that way. I'm from Texas, so you, we say you ain't seen nothing yet. But if it make you feel better, you can say you have not seen anything yet as of yet. If you like Sister Amy, you dignify, sophisticated, say you have not seen anything as of yet. <laughs> Sir, you have not seen anything as of yet. When God, God is on the move, God is moving, God is working, and it is not, it's not up. To God, he's ready, he's waiting on the church. In my opinion, he's been waiting on the church. This brother wants to give some more offering, I think. Mama's teaching him good, or somebody's teaching him good. In my opinion, God has always been waiting on the church. We've never been waiting on God. It's always been the season. It's been the season ever since Acts 2. It's been God's will for revival. It's been God's will for a Holy Ghost outpouring, Holy Ghost explosion. It's been God's will for the church to be in charge ever since he put the church in charge. But it's religion that's boxed us up. It's religion that's put us in, a, in, in our little shells of insecurity and fear and timidity. God's ready to move. You have not seen anything yet. Now I'm going I'm going I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of time tonight because we got time. Yes, we do. We got time. And I'm I, it it it's, it doesn't matter if I holler, if I scream, if I yell, if I do flips, if I do any of that stuff. I'm not worried about all that stuff. We're just going to track with the Holy Ghost and let the Lord do what the Lord wants to do. But I've got a word that I've got to pour into you. I've got a word that I've got to put into you and I have been it's, this is not a canned message. Come on. This is not a canned sermon that uh, I pulled out of my file cabinet to preach to you. God's been, I've been praying about this service, fasting about this service. Come on. And I, and I traveled a couple of thousand miles to get here through Odessa to here. And God has talked to me all the way. 
Come on, come on. And I, and the Lord's talked to me about this church and about this service. And I thought, well, I, you know, I, so I've been trying to find the time. I've been trying to find the time to put this message together. I hadn't been able to find, I wasn't able to find the time. So we got here on Friday. And we were wore out because we had been on the road. We had been traveling a while. We got here on Friday. I thought, well, Friday night, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this message together. Didn't have time Friday night. So make a long story short. Let's see, not Friday night. When did we get here? I got there Friday. We got here Monday. Tuesday. So I tried to put the message together. Anyway, make a long story short. Got it together last night. This is not a canned message. This is a word from God. I'm going to Jeremiah chapter 2. This is Wednesday, December the 31st, is it not? This is the last day, 2014. 2014 is about to be in the books. It's about to be history. Jeremiah chapter 2, and then Galatians chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 2, Galatians chapter 4, and I would watch the clock, but it don't make any difference. It wouldn't do any good anyway. And since we're going to be here for a while, we're just going to have a good time. And I give honor to Pastor John Michael and Sister Amy. Love them very, very much. Give honor to you, sir, and to your family. I'm so proud of you and proud for you and your wife and your children. Give honor to Pastor and Sister Harry. That's good. Go ahead and do that. Amen. I give honor to Pastor and Sister Harris and glad that they are here tonight. Looking forward to hearing from them tomorrow. And I give honor to you. I give honor to you and your church looks beautiful. This building looks beautiful. This facility looks beautiful. I, I give honor to you and, and for, for the time that you put into it, and the finances that you have put into it. God bless you. It shows that you care about your worship facility. It shows you care about what people think when they come here. It care, you, you, it, they feel welcome here. They feel wanted here. And I appreciate that. Jeremiah chapter 2. And, and, you know, and, and, and your pastor was right. He and Brother Harris are a lot alike in that they don't know a stranger. They're not afraid to talk to anybody. And then that's just the love of God. I don't think Jesus knew a stranger. I don't think Jesus was afraid to talk to anybody. And uh, so... You know, there you go. And that's, that's, that's a wonderful trait to have. Amen? That's a wonderful trait to have. Praise God. Are you ready to hear from the Lord? Mm. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 12. Are you there? Say amen. Be astonished. It literally means be stupefied. Oh, ye heavens, at this. And be horribly afraid, and be very desolate, or be dry, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Verse 14, is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? The Good News Bible says, verse 14, like this, Israel is not a slave. He was not born into slavery. Why then do his enemies hunt him down? God's Word translation says, verse 14, like this, Are the people of Israel slaves? Were they born into slavery? Listen to this. Why then have they become someone's property? Woo, man, it's going to get good up in here before we're done. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 7. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 7. Are you there? Say amen. amen. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son than an heir of God through Christ. The Good News Bible says it like this. So then you are no longer a slave, but a child of God. And listen, and since you are a child, or excuse me, since you are his child, 
I don't know if you can handle this last part right here. Since you are his child, God will give you all that he has for his children. We ought not have to preach anymore right there. That ought to be enough said, enough done. That ought to wrap it up right there. If you are his child, he will give you all that he has. gets me excited right there that gets me turned on and gets me excited right there because if you can imagine all I better I better wait I better wait I better wait I better wait father we love you we thank you for your presence that we feel in this place right now and God I ask that all that every distraction be removed in the name of Jesus that our hearts and our minds and our spirits would come to attention Stand at attention to you and to your word in the name of Jesus. Remove every distraction. Give us ears. I want you to pray this with me right now. Lord, give me ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to me right now. Give me ears to hear. I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening, and I want to hear what your Spirit is saying to me right now. Father, give me eyes to see what you have for me and my family in the Spirit. Give me eyes to see what you have for this church in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would you clap your hands again to the Lord? I want to talk to you about a paradigm shift tonight. I want to talk to you about measuring the immeasurable. Say that with me. Measuring the immeasurable. Say attitude. Say vision. Attitude and vision are everything, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and I heard two words for this church on my journey down here. God gave me two words for this ministry for 2015, and that was attitude and vision. Say it with me again, attitude and vision. Because if your attitude and your vision are going into this new year are not right, then you are going to find yourself digging out wells broken wells that cannot hold any water if your attitude and your vision are not right going into 2015 you are going to find yourself again digging out wells broken wells that can hold no water you're going to find yourself frustrated because when we when we as men and women of God forsake God's word which is God's fountain of living water to us when we forsake God's word and we forsake God's vision for us, then we automatically begin to rely on our strength and our ability and our inventions and our confidence and our talents and our singing and our abilities and our gifts. When we get away from God's word and God's vision, we have a tendency to lean on the arm of the flesh, if you please, which leads to nothing but confusion it leads to nothing but destruction it leads to nothing but frustration somebody say attitude somebody say vision ladies and gentlemen our actions how we act and how we react to the things of God from a biblical perspective will determine our harvest our attitude our actions and our reactions in the word of God it is very important Important how we act, how we speak, and how we respond. Somebody say attitude. It is very important. I know that uh, that us as apostolics, when we come to uh, uh, God, when we get saved as Pentecostals, uh, we will change everything about us. We'll change uh, the way we dress. We'll change the way uh, 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 where we go, what we watch, what we listen to. We'll change all of those things. We'll change, uh, uh, instead of sleeping late on Sunday, we'll come to church. We'll change all of those things. It, it, it will change anything that we think think God wants us to change except for our thinking we just seem to have a problem changing the way that we think we don't want to get rid of stinking thinking if you please 
But in the Bible, it's very important how we act and how we speak and how we respond. Somebody say attitude. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 through 27 from the NIV reads like this. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Listen, are you ready for this? I'm just going to lay it down straight as God's giving it to me tonight. Are you ready for it? Say amen. Amen. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Somebody say attitude. Can I read it again? Put perversity from your mouth and keep corrupt talk from your lips. That's attitude. Verse 25 says, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. That's vision. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Quit looking to the right and quit looking to the left. And I'm going to say it right now. Quit looking behind you because the past is... You got to quit looking behind you because the past is exactly that. It's gone. It's under the blood. It's... If you're going to go into 2015 and do what God wants you to do as a church, you got to fix your eyes. You got to fix your attitude and your vision have got to be right. Proverbs 28 or 29 and 18. 29 and 18, somebody say vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The word vision is a sight mentally or a dream. It is a revelation. Without a revelation or a dream, a people become ungovernable. One translation says without prophetic vision, people run wild. Another translation says where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. The message says if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. You have got to see and you have got to be open to what God is doing and what God is ready to do, what God wants to do through you and through this church in 2015. You have got to see it and you've got to be open to it. When the vision comes down from the man of God, and that's where vision starts. It starts in the pulpit, it comes down to the leaders, and then it comes into the saints. And if the leaders don't get the vision, and the saints don't get the vision, then the church is a miserable church. Excuse me there, buddy. You're going to get hurt. Vision, vision, vision. What are you looking at, ladies and gentlemen? What are you focused on? Are you focused on circumstances? Are you focused on problems? Are you focused on the enemy? Some people, again, are so focused on the past that they can't look at the future. They can't see no hope in the future. They can't find direction for the future because they can't get their eyes off the past. you got to quit looking back. I'm sorry for what you went through back there. I'm sorry for what happened to you. I'm sorry for what people done to you. But that's gone. It's dead. It's under the blood. You have got to move forward. You've been hurt and you have been broken in the past. You have been hurt and criticized and slammed and lambat blasted in the past. But that's exactly what it is. It's past. It's old. It's no, it's old. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, it's old news. It's old news. Ain't nobody interested in old news but the devil. The devil's the old. I don't want to hear no old news. I want to hear revival. I want to hear miracles. I want to hear signs. I want to hear wonders. I want to hear what God is doing right now. Listen to me. I'll just be bold. I'll just be frank. You know me well enough by now. We've been coming here a few years. I don't care about where you come from or what you've been through or how you lived before. Take my hand now and let's go forward now. Let's go. 
go win souls now. Let's go heal people now. Let's go deliver people now. The only thing we can do about yesterday, the only thing we can do about the past is just forgive and forget and put it under the blood. Some people can't get past the past. Past the past. The past is a collection of old stale, outdated things. You know where stale, outdated things need to go? I wish I had a trash can. Stale and outdated things go in the trash can. Throw them in the trash can. Put it in the trash can. Somebody in this church, I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't planning on staying right here very long, but somebody in this building right now, you need to get a spiritual shovel. You need to get a Holy Ghost shovel. You need to dig up. You need to dig you a grave. That ain't big enough. That ain't even big enough. I don't care about that little old thing. You need to get, <laughs> you need to get a shovel. You need to get a Holy, you need to get a Holy Ghost backhoe and dig you a grave. And <laughs> hey. You might tell you, you see how the Holy Ghost is. You see how God is. I, I started with a little trash can, and God. And then I thought I, I said a shovel would be good. And the Holy Ghost said, "Get a backhoe. Get you a backhoe. Get you an earth mover. Dig a grave. Dig you a grave and bury what's been trying to bury you." Attitude and vision. Bury what's been trying to kill you. Bury what's been holding you hostage. Bury what's been discouraging you. Bury what's been defeating you. Give the Lord a clap offering right now. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Woo! Look at your neighbor. I'm, I'm going to borrow this phrase right here. But look at him. Tell him, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Woo, my God. I don't know about you, but I am ready. Because I just got a feeling in my spirit. I got a feeling in my spirit that, that 2015 is going to be a breakthrough year. It's going to be a breakthrough through year. It's going to be a breakthrough year. I got a feeling in my spirit that 2015 is going to be a fulfillment year. It's going to be a year of standing up into identity and standing up into purpose. I believe 2015 is going to be a year where the chains are going to be broken. Yokes are going to be Yokes aren't going to be broken.